Artificial intelligence stocks have been exceptionally hot lately. Obviously, NVIDIA has been leading the way, hitting $726. We had SOUN, an artificial intelligence stock that is that many of you on this channel are very familiar with. We're holding for a while. Reap the rewards today. It's up 66%. SMCI, which is a cloud, artificial intelligence, edge computing related stock is up to $1,000 today, up another 14% today. AI stocks are heating up. I'm going to talk about in this video, could BBAI be the next artificial intelligence stock to have a run out of it? I'm going to talk about that in this video. I'm going to talk about some biotech stocks I'm loading up and still continuing to buy for upcoming catalysts and PRs. I'm going to talk about some trades that I took today. I took a $3,400 loss on CERO, but I made that back with a $3,400 profit on MSAI, $4,600 profit on BZFD, and a $6,500 profit on CURO. I'm going to go over those trades in this video, and AI stocks I'm loading up on, biotech stocks I'm loading up for news. So let's start off with ticker CERO. This, came, this was my loss of the day of $3,400. This loss came after making some good profit on these other three tickers. In this case, this was a bit of a mistake for me because I was already up, you know, about nearly 10K on the day, $10,000 trading on the day, and I got a little bit greedy. I wanted to kind of gamble on, you know, a setup I usually wouldn't take and try to, you know, see if I could increase those profits significantly that didn't happen i ended up giving back some of my gains so ticker cero here this is a d spec this is a company that recently changed their ticker changed their name merged uh this a, a spac is basically just a shell company where another company they're looking to merge into the shell company so they can be a publicly so they can go from a private company to a publicly listed company on the stock market and a de-spec is a way a lot of these companies do it so this recently de spec after they de-spec after they merge it always crashes back down you there's no really a real true way to tell where this is going to bounce because it's usually just a falling knife you know until it starts to get some volume until it starts to get momentum then you can kind of you know tell where this is going to bounce but you know i saw tvgn today this was the same situation where it was a D spec. It fell to four dollars, and once it bottomed out at four, it went up. You know, for you know around a twenty-one bucks for a three hundred and seventy-five percent move. So I was looking at CERO, and I was like, hmm. Well, if TVGN can do that, why not CERO? That's what that, that's what I was thinking on, on this trade here. It previously ran up to twelve. You know, I was thinking if this can break over seven dollar resistance here then we might be able to fill this gap at 1043. So I got in at around $6.60. I was looking for that $7 break. It tried to break over it, couldn't do it. I ended up holding, um, it went, you know, it went, came all the way back down to four bucks. I cut this position. You know, I'm not gonna hold this thing overnight. It was a loss, but on trades that don't work out for me, I'm always willing to cut them out. So that prevents me from suffering an even bigger loss. I was going for that $10 gap. We didn't get the $7 break. And, you know, this is just a trade that I should not have been taking. A trade that I did take that was successful today was ticker MSAI. This is another D spec. Just, you know, in 2023, late December 2023, this company merged into a, this D-spec, they changed their name to Multisensor AI, their ticker is MSAI, and basically what happened with this one today is they dropped news. So at 2.06 p.m., MSAI, Multisensor AI unveils Smart AI 2.0 software platform. So I saw that news headline, and I was like, uh, that's not that great of news. Uh, probably not gonna take this trade. But then I looked at it, and I know I double took, I was like, hmm, they unveiled, you know, some AI platform. Well, this is what's hot right now. Artificial intelligence, NVIDIA, SMCI, you know, SOUN, these AI stocks are starting to get hot. So I was like, hmm, let me try this. Let me add a few shares um, 
you know, at around 260, 270s. And let's see if I can get a quick 5, 10, 15% trade out of this. Let's see if people are going to start to notice these artificial intelligence headlines again and start to buy them, you know, quickly, you know, on these types of headlines. So actually somebody in the private discord, you know, you know, asked, did anybody get an MSAI here uh, after they dropped that news? And the reason he was asking that is because, you know, just four minutes after they dropped the news, this thing halted up. So usually if you're in a stock before the halt up, that can be pretty good because most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time after the halt up, the stock can gap up after the halt. Sometimes it can gap down after the halt, but I'd say more times than not, you know, I'd, I'd say over 60, 70% of the times, if you're in a stock when it halts up, then after the halt, you're going to be in a little bit more profit. So he asked me that in the private discord. I said, I was able to grab or I showed him my buys here, you know, you know, about 3000 shares, uh, 2,600 shares at, you know, 250s or 270s, somewhere around there. And it halted up, it, it gapped up at open, and I was able to sell my entire position over $4 per share um, for about a $3,400 profit on ticker MSAI. So yes, I'm going to be looking for artificial intelligence headlines going forward into next week. I think artificial intelligence is just starting to heat up again. I think we could see some more small cap runners within the artificial intelligence sector. So these headlines might help create some of these runners. So a nice profit over there from SAI. Then we had ticker BZFD, which was a $4,600 profit on ticker BZFD. Um, so what ended up happening with ticker BZFD? Well, BZFD ended up dropping, you know, there was, there was buyout rumors coming out today. So at 11.23 a.m., literally right when I saw this headline, I posted that in the private Discord at 11.23 a.m. There's a link in the top and comment to join the private Discord for some penny stock alerts, options alerts, quick news, all instant news headlines on these plays that's creating these squeeze plays. But I posted 10.23 a.m. BZFD buyout talks. That was literally right here. 10.23 a.m. is right here, right before it started to pop up here. So I bought you know, literally right when that headline came out that there was a buyout coming out because these these penny stocks have been extremely hot. These low price, this was under 20 cents when I saw it. Um, you know, these have been extremely hot lately. We've seen some big runners and we got a stock, BZFD, that has buyout talks. And, you know, you can see independent in talks to take over BuzzFeed and a Huffington Post in the UK. Something interesting is that BuzzFeed was going, you know, had talks of going bankrupt in April and uh, they they still could go bankrupt, but I don't think they have filed for bankruptcy yet and they were about to shut down. They were still trading. They're getting buyout talks. I figured this could definitely pop 10, 20, 30 percent on, on that news drop. Well, I ended up getting and maybe even a few shares under 20 cents. I was quick on this one and I, I you know, I actually... You know, it started to pop up 40% here when I got in at around, let's say, 20 cents. I was already taking profit there. If I just let this thing ride out completely all the way to 44, I probably would have had a 10K profit or even more a 15K profit if I just let this ride out. But I was taking profit because for me to continue to be a, you know, consistent, successful trader, I got to take profit quickly when I see it. But sometimes, you know, they do ride out even higher. Uh, where I can always get back in, like I got back in here for another quick trade to a pop over 40 to 44, and that resulted in a $4,600 profit. Um, I would keep an eye on BZFD going forward. If this thing does hold over, I would say the 20 cents level, maybe 21 cents, the 50 day MA on the five, or the 200 day MA on the five is at 21 cents here, which can be some good support. If there's some more buyout rumors on ticker BZFD, this is probably one to continue to keep an eye on. But just keep in mind, they definitely could still announce bankruptcy. It's just these rumors that people are talking about. But overall, you know, I'm not in this play anymore. I'm not in BZFD. I took my quick trade, $4,600 $4, profit 
right when the news came out. Literally just a news play. Uh, CURO was a $6,500 profit. So what happened with ticker CURO here is I noticed that ticker SIEN was running, you know, 220% and then it went up to, you know, a 500% move run ticker SIEN. Well, SIEN is a play that is announcing Chapter 11 bankruptcy. They're, they announced Chapter 11 bankruptcy. These bankruptcy stocks have been hot lately. We saw what happened to uh, SUNW uh, recently where they announced bankruptcy, um, but they ended up bottoming out here at three cents for a 476% pop. NSTG ended up doing the same thing where they announced bankruptcy, bottomed out at five cents, had a 651% move. Remember, all of these bankruptcy plays end up getting delisted off NASDAQ and going to zero. So SUNW, it ran all the way up to 20 cents, but now it's back down to three cents. NSTG ran all the way up to 37 cents, but it now, now it's back down to four cents. But before these get delisted and before they completely get wiped off the NASDAQ, they can have pops. So I saw SIEN popping up 500%. And I knew that ticker CURO was another stock that was announcing bankruptcy. They were announcing, you know, plans of restructuring, you know, plans of, you know, liquidation, you know, restructuring, which is, you know, a lot of times when you hear restructuring, that usually results in bankruptcy. So CURO, they haven't announced bankruptcy yet, but they, they, they plan to, you know, in the near future. So I saw CSIEN running. I saw that CURO, you know, was basically the next up as a potential sympathy to SIEN because it's a very low market cap, very low float play. I let people in the, in the private discord know right here that I took some CURO on the 25 cent support, which was when it ran up here initially and then it pulled back at, down to 25 cents. I was looking at the five uh, minute candle here and you can see that we had that wick up to 25, 25 cents is a psychological support level. I took some here on this pullback, ended up running 124% after me letting everybody know in the private discord my position because we ended up sniping out that bottom. So that was a great trade of $6,500 profit for ticker CURO. Guys, remember if you're day trading these stocks, day trading these movers, you got, you know, I'm always taking my profit as quickly as possible. I'm taking my green when I see it. And if I'm, and if I have a loser, I'm cutting that loser very quickly as well. We also had a 1,000% uh, or 500% Chinese pop. Guys, these Chinese pops, they pop pre-market and they can come down just as quickly from the highs here. This is already down 71%. So people that are getting caught up on the back end of these Chinese pumps are getting screwed. But if you're playing them just like the strategy I talked about yes in yesterday's video, you can play them on these breakouts. The breakout level here um, in pre-market for JXJT was two, you know, around 283. It broke over that, held some candles over, ended up running, you know, 175% after that. So you can still play them if you're playing them like that, playing them for the breakout where they break out, you know, over the pre-market levels where it previously topped out at, breaks over, holds some candles over, and then, you know, if it ends up holding over that previous, you know, you know, resistance level here, then you can see a nice move out of these Chinese stocks, but just don't get caught, you know, holding the bag or buying at the top and getting screwed over because then you're going to get absolutely wrecked. So SOUN, I talked about a, talked about this one a little bit yesterday. I've been talking about this one for a long time on the channel now. This finally rewarded shareholders hitting a high of $4.49 in, in pre-market trading this morning. Absolutely huge. There's probably going to be some profit takers for sure because a lot of people have been holding this for a while and they probably want to secure some profit. We know that main, the main reason that caused this run was NVIDIA disclosing a stake in SOUN. Remember, and anything you know related to NVIDIA right now, uh, if an NVIDIA discloses a stake or if a, a, a penny stock puts NVIDIA in their headline, then that stock is going to basically you know, has a good chance of rocketing and uh, getting a lot of volume off of that. So NVIDIA has a big influence on the market right now. We have SOUN ripping up. 
What I would be looking for for SAUN is it for it to hold over 335. If it can hold over that, that's a good support level. And then get back to this 450 five dollar level. If you do see this break five, you know we could go to seven, eight, nine. Um, but it's gonna have to break and hold over five. I do think it's definitely possible. There's a lot of momentum right now uh, within the market, but you know never be afraid to take your profit on a play like this. You know, it definitely could come back down and, uh, you know, lose a little bit of that momentum. But we'll see if this definitely, we'll definitely watch to see if this wants to continue. I th still think SAUN has a ton of potential. And I did want to mention, they actually are acquiring uh, SYNQ for a total consideration of $25 million. So they have an acquisition coming up, $25 million acquisition. And that deal is expected to close in, the, in quarter one of 2024. So that is a catalyst here. For ticker SOUN, quarter four ends or quarter one ends March 31st. So that's definitely a catalyst that could be happening in about a month and a half for SOUN or less. SOUN, the, the, the short interest rate is 11%. So there definitely could have been some shorts that got squeezed out during this run because a lot of shorts, so they may have not expected a run to happen based on an old NVIDIA holding in the company, which could have caused them to get squeezed out, you know, could have surprised a little bit of shorts there. So um, obviously we have, you know, SAUN, AI stock running, NVIDIA, the AI leader continuing to run, SMCI breaking out, artificial intelligence related, the chat ETF, the, the chat uh, generative AI ETF. I've been adding this for a long time. This has holdings like NVIDIA, Soundtown, BBAI, tons of different Chinese AI companies, tons of US AI companies, all in one. I've been, you know, I accumulated this for quite some time. It's hitting all time highs. So just to show you that AI is hot. Uh, also, uh, C3 AI, watch for C3 AI to hold over 30. If it's able to do so, we could definitely see C3 AI get hot again. We know that this went all the way to nearly 50 bucks on the last AI hype cycle. Seems to be happening again. And also keep an eye on ticker BBAI. So this is a small cap artificial intelligence stock that I'm keeping a very, very close eye on. It's at 225 right now. It started to gain some momentum today. Today it had 13 million volume, which was the most volume that this has had since... Uh, June 2023. So this is getting volume again. That's a very good sign. BBAI usually runs with SOUN. SOUN has run significantly while BBAI is kind of lagging behind it. Uh, BBAI, you know, we can check here that, you know, this is a $283 million uh, artificial intelligence company that you know, provides AI and machine learning for decision support for government and defense and manufacturing, healthcare and life sciences. Recently, the BBAI announced that it was working with Amazon, and they also were given a $3 price target recently. I think that $3 price target is definitely very possible if we break over 335, where you can see that this 335 level is a strong level of resistance here it previously tried to break this you know in december 2023 it wasn't able to do so we'll see if it can this time if not if it doesn't break over 235 then it could definitely double top out but if it breaks up then we could definitely see this head to three dollars per share in my personal opinion that's definitely a possibility i really do like bbai on if it if it's able to break that 235 we have some big volume coming in they are a partner with Amazon. And, you know, it's one of the hot AI companies that likes to run when artificial intelligence gets hot. It it ran from 58 cents to six bucks, a thousand percent runner. So it has a history of big runs. I think this is one you should be keeping an eye on. And also when the daily, it's over the 50, it's back over the 50 day moving average and it's back over the 200 day moving average on the daily, on the weekly, it's over the 50 day moving average. And it's more convincingly over the 50-day moving average this time than it was in 20 than it was in December 2023. So BBAI, I could definitely see this as a small cap artificial intelligence company to start getting very, very, very hot soon. Also, 
you know, I'm still loading up on BDRX. Uh, uh, this is a biotech, very tiny, small cap play. Uh, this is a 5 million market cap, 3 million float. This is not a long-term hold BDRX. Neither is BBAI. This is not a long-term hold. This is a, you know, a height momentum play that you can get in on, you know, a strong break of resistance, ride it up to, you know, three, maybe 350, four bucks and make 50, you know, maybe 20, 50, 100% potential out of BBAI. BDRX, this is the same thing. Uh, what I'm looking for for BDRX is to kind of add, you know, a portion of shares on pullbacks here. So I would, I'm going to be looking to add some shares at a dollar fifty-four, some shares at a dollar forty. I do want to see a hold over a dollar forty, but then I'll establish my position around those levels. And then what we have coming up here is in quarter one, they still have top line data, phase one data to report. Uh, preclinical data to report, two different preclinical pre milestones to report for BDRX. We have not got that news yet. I'm still in. I'm still waiting for some some of that some of that news to come out. Um, I'm uh, you know like I said, my stop loss is under a dollar. So if it breaks under a dollar, I'll take my loss and move on to the next one. But I do believe BDRX has some catalysts coming up. Same with PTPI here. I'm still loading up on this one. They have an FDA meeting and potential FDA news in March, March 26th and March 11th. So that's very good. And PTPI recently announced a agreement with a leading multi-billion dollar software provider, and they're gonna be providing details about the partnership, you know, in the coming weeks and months. So definitely PTPI, BDRX, these are my top two play, uh, you know, biotech plays that I'm still loading up on. Um, and you know, swinging them for these FDA catalysts, I think they're, they definitely have an opportunity to be to be big ones still. BDRX, there's no new filings. PTPI, there's no new filings today, so that's good. We don't want to see any new dilution coming in. BDRX still has 6.9 months of cash left. They said they have enough cash to get these trials done. PTPI has tons of cash, 15.2 million cash. So I'm t I'm still swinging these. I'll update you guys along the way. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Drop a like on this video if you do enjoy this content. That's it for me. Peace.